What's up everyone, Samuel Hill, AKA Newman Photographs. Today we have a portrait of this lovely lady that I photographed in one of my street photography videos. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram to follow that journey, or you can go on my YouTube shorts and see that as well. There'll be a link in the description for both of those. If you like these videos where I just sit down and you guys watch me edit in Adobe Lightroom, make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any more of these videos. So today I'm gonna show you how I turn this photo into that. Let's get started. So I'm right here in Lightroom and this photo is a little bit overexposed. As you can see, if we look at here, I had the ISO at 100, I was at 1.4 and I shot it at 1 500th of a second. That was the shutter speed. If I were to reshoot, retake this photo, I would raise up the shutter speed quite a bit or uh, bring up the aperture, but I really wanted that blurry background. So I would just raise up the shutter speed so that way it would be, it would be less overexposed. But this is something that we can fix in Adobe Lightroom. That is why it's important to shoot in RAW. So with, whenever you're taking photos or shooting portraits, make sure to always shoot in RAW because I can go in here using the exposure, just lower it like that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Okay, so let's get started in editing this photo, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is lower the exposure. Not too much. Okay, I'll, I'll put it at around one, one fifth, well, yeah, 158, that'll do it. Then I'm gonna lower down the highlights quite a bit. Bring up the exposure a little bit now. Yeah, say uh, 1.05, that should do it. Now I'm gonna raise up the shadows. Let's raise them up, say around 20, that'll be good. I'm gonna put down the whites. So right now what we're doing could be considered um, the first step in uh, editing the photo. We're just fixing the white balance, we're fixing the exposure, we're fixing the highlights, the shadows, bringing everything to a nice level. And then I'm gonna uh, bring down the blacks, yeah. and the white balance, I'm gonna set it on daylight. Very good, this gives me this warm look that I am going for. If we do a quick before and after, you can see the difference here, right? We're not done, but so far, so good. Okay, now, as usual, I'm gonna bring up the texture. I'm gonna bring down the clarity. Yeah, I really like this. And then I'm gonna bring up the vibrance, I think, just a bit. Yeah, just a bit. Perfect. Now we're done with the basics. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the details, right? And I'm just gonna bring up the noise reduction so to get rid of some of that noise. Perfect. Now I'm gonna go down to the tone curves. The lights, I'm gonna put it at around, I think I'm gonna lower it. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna bring up the darks just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. For the tone curves, guys, I usually don't do too much in the tone curves, right? Just really small adjustments, as you can see, right? To bring up some of those details. Yeah, it's not a lot, but it's the little things that add up. Perfect, now let's move down to the HSL, right? The hue, saturation, and luminance. I really like using these settings to desaturate the yellows, the greens, and sometimes the blue. If you really want a more detailed explanation, of how the HSL works, I encourage you to watch this video right here where I went over it. Okay, so for the hue, I'm gonna bring down the yellow tones and the green tones. Start with the yellow tones. Yeah, I'm gonna shift them to a different hue, a more warmish tone. Yeah, something like that. I'm gonna go down to the saturation and really desaturate those, uh, those yellow tones and those green tones, right? The yellow tones are gonna desaturate them to like, negative 50 or something. And the green tones, I'm going to desaturate them to almost the same thing, All right? So this is really affecting the background. So if you look at the background before and after, you'll see that those colors are almost completely gone. And that that's, you, you might not like this, right? But this is the look that I like, it, it's my style. Now for the luminance, I'm gonna bring down the yellow luminance, yeah. I'm just gonna bring down the green, uh, the green, that should work around here. Yep, perfect. Now let's move down to the color grading. So let's start with the shadows. For the color grading, 
I usually like to have my wheels at around 147, which is a kind of greenish, or I guess it's more of a teal color. And I like to raise the saturation of that just a little bit. You see, it adds a little bit of teal in the shadows, right? And I, I really like this look. And for the mid-tones, I like to have it at around, around, oops. I like to have it at around 36 and raise the saturation. Now you won't see those changes unless you raise the saturation a little bit. So say if I raise the saturation by 15, boom. You see, the skin tones are, it looks a little bit more natural. It's a little bit more warm. And I really like that. And for the highlights, I like to have that at around, say, 20. And the saturation at around, say, 10. Yeah, perfect. So if you do the before and after, see? Even that background looks better. The background, it kind of looked it kind of looked disconnected from the subject, right? But now, even though it's a little bit desaturated, desaturated the background, it's, it has this warmish tone to it. And I really like that. If we do a quick before and after, boom, 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 boom. What I'm just gonna do, as usual, I'm gonna go down to the effects and add a little bit of vignette. Perfect. Perfect. And for the calibration, I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. I don't think I really need calibration for this one. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna use calibration. Okay, now it's time for the final step. Well, one of the final steps, which is masks. And I think I'll make a video about masks soon because uh, a couple of you guys in the comments have asked me to cover that in a video. So stay tuned, make sure to subscribe because I'll make a video on masks and how it works pretty soon. So right now, the usual, I'm going to darken the background, darken everything around the subject and bring out uh, their face a little bit more. So let me do that. Select the background, perfect. I'm gonna lower that. Uh, again, I like to stay away from the negative one or under negative one, I'd say. But for this photo, the background it wasn't that bright to begin with. So I'm just gonna leave it around there. That should do it. I'm gonna bring out a radial here. Move this here a little bit, feather that out. Then I'm going to invert it and lower the exposure. Then I'm going to duplicate and invert the mask and raise up the exposure just a bit. Yeah, I'm also going to raise the whites a bit. Let's do a quick before and after. Boom. You can really see the, the impact that masks have on the portraits. So right now I'm just going to go back to the normal settings and um, make some adjustments. I might raise up the Highlights a little bit, right? Tweak this here. And now, this is usually where I would stop. So let's do a quick before and after to see what we've done. Boom. So as you can see, we fixed the issue with the overexposition. Um, her eyes are nice and sharp. By adding some texture, it really helps to sharpen the eyes, and sharpen the face and, and all that stuff, right? Uh, the background is not too distracting anymore. There's barely any colors in the background. I don't really like to have colors in the background. Things. This is why I desaturate the, like, the yellow tones, the green tones, the blue tones, right? These are the tones that are most um, present in uh, the background. And I'm really happy with um, how we were able to bring, to still bring in some of the details in the highlights here, right? Because there's, we almost can't see anything in the original image. But in the edit, it's a little bit more controlled. It's it's not too distracting. So I really like where this is going, or I guess where this is at right now. So yeah, this is the final image. Now, if you really like my style and you don't wanna to have to go through the hassle of doing all of this for each and every one of your portraits, I will be putting a link to my preset pack. It's still in preparation, so it's not yet ready, but when it is, it'll be, I'll put it in the description and it'll be the very first link. If that's something that interests you, make sure to leave a comment and let me know. But that is it for today's video. I hope you liked it, found it entertaining, or learned something new from it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like, 
and subscribe to the channel to not miss any more. If you want to keep following my journey in street photography, I'll leave a link to my Instagram in the description below. Also a link to where you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to keep watching, you can watch this video here where I go into details about editing portraits in Lightroom, a lot more details than I did in this video. I even talk about the HSL, if that's something that interests you. Or you can watch this video here where I talk about my journey and how I plan to go full in on YouTube this year and next year. Thank you for watching. Keep creating, stay creative. God bless you and I'll see you in the next one.